All right, let's do this. Let's definitely do this. Hope you had a good weekend. I hope you had a good Lord's Day. I had a good one and all of that kind of thing. A couple prayer requests, if you don't mind. Uh, there's a there's a man at my church. Uh, he's older, and he's the one who kind of leads the singing and all of that. Uh, anyway, his health has been deteriorating, and um, and turns out he has brain cancer, and it's kind of an aggressive one. So, you know, barring a miracle, you know, his days on earth are definitely numbered. Pray for his recovery. Pray for his comfort, for his family, for him, all of that kind of thing. He's at home right now, but... Um, but yeah, it's not looking good, so prayers would be appreciated for that. Also, I've got a few deals in the works this week, and uh, just prayers that they would go through. I could definitely use a, a, a positive uh, start to the year for sure, so prayers for that as well. I would appreciate it. Today's Martin Luther King Day, and um, you know this is the day that, that we get off from work. Uh, I don't take off work because, you know, I'm whatever, I do whatever I want. But um, this is the day that a lot of white evangelicals will be swooning about Martin Luther King. And, um, well, you know, eh, that's my that's my feelings on Martin Luther King. Eh. But uh, have you seen the new statue? It's this is unbelievable. I mean, me and Marcus, uh, we talked about art on Friday. Um, and, and this is the antithesis of what we're talking about. This is the kind of grotesque sort of monstrous art that's been produced by a pagan worldview. It's just completely demoralizing and disgusting. It reminds me of, you know, ever, ever play a video game like Final Fantasy VII or something like that where there's like a genetic monster that's being created and you have to fight this monster, but it just it's just like a mishmash. It's very low effort, right? It's like a mishmash of like body parts sticking out and heads and things like that. It's just it's just a disgusting monster. But at least in the game, it's like, well, you understand why because it's a, number one, it's a monster, and number two, it's like a genetic like freak, right? Th- that's what this thing looks like. And this is just one. This is actually the more flattering angle, if you can believe it. It looks like two hands holding a penis, a gigantic penis. That's what it looks like. And then the other side of it looks pornographic. This is the, if you can believe it, the, the, the penis side is the non-pornographic side, if you can believe it. And then somebody was like, oh, you know, the, 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 the angle it's supposed to be viewed at, you know, kind of looks like that one photo. And I'm like, how could you even know what angle this is supposed to be viewed at? It's a monster. In any case, it's completely disgusting. But it is fitting. I will say it is fitting uh, for our current age this is what we this is the kind of art we deserve as a as a nation who's turned from Christ this is not what me and Marcus were talking about and this is not what I'll be talking about on this channel a bit more I, I did look at the comments of that video and it's very clear to me that um, a lot of people get it some people don't the importance of beautiful art um, God thinks it's important I think it's important I think you should think it's important too and I've got more content coming out about that because I'm no expert I'm no historian of art or anything like that but I do understand the importance of it uh, as far as being a human being so more to come on that I did though want to talk about Tim Keller again because Tim is just he is a bad take machine there's just no question about it. I was thinking about this the other day, um, the Lord's Prayer, right? Because a lot of our churches right now, they're not liturgical. And so if you go to a liturgical church, there's a very good chance that you pray the Lord's Prayer every Sunday. But if you don't go to a liturgical church, you might not pray it at all. I mean, just when you're in that passage in the Bible, right? But the Lord's Prayer is just, it's packed with awesome theology, as you might imagine. I mean, of course, God's prayer, <laughs> Christ, Christ, the way Christ taught us how to pray, of course, is going to be packed with awesome stuff. Um, but the Lord's Prayer, you know, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Obviously, there's a bit more to it than that, but that's where I want to stop for right now. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, what is the will of God, right? What is what is the will of God that we are praying to Him? We, or we ought to be anyway. We, we're praying to God for His will to be done here on earth, the way it's done in heaven, right? My, thy will, Your kingdom come, Your kingdom, Your rule, right? That's what a kingdom is. It's a rule of a ruler. God is a ruler. He's a King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords, and we don't 
just think that listen i think a lot of people think that in a in a kind of like an esoteric like you know indistinguishable way that's how it should stay it should stay in the spiritual realm no i don't think that's how his rule is done in heaven it is done thoroughly it is done in every manner in every way and then it says thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven what is god's will see i think a lot of people would want to limit this to like what, what, what theologians call the secret will, where it's like, you know, we, whatever God w- wants to happen is going to happen, but we don't really know what God wants to happen. Like, like God has already written my book, right? He's already written the book of A.D. Robles, and he's written whatever he wants, his, whatever his will is, right? He could be, it could be that, that my, his will for me is to live to 120, or it could be his will is that today is my last day on earth, or anything in between, and any kind of story, any kind of thing could happen to me, or to my family, or to any, he's already written that book, right? So that's his will, but I have no knowledge of that, right? I have no knowledge of it, so I have to live it moment by moment, um, as if that it's not already written, right? I got to live it, you know, make my decisions, you know, that kind of thing and all of that. But, but there's, no, there's nothing in the text, though. There's nothing in the prayer that would limit it to that kind of will, right? So what is the will of God? We, we know what the will of God is. And as, as someone who's praying it, we can say that we want his will to be done. And that will is revealed in the law of God, right? It's revealed in the law of God. And so we've got, of course, the will of God that's secret that we don't have any knowledge of, right? Like, what am I going to do tomorrow? Well, God knows, but I don't know, right? I don't know what's going to happen to me tomorrow. I mean, I've got my plans, but who knows? Anything could change my plans. So we've got that will, and of course, we're praying for that will to be done. But we understand that will is going to be done, right? God's will will be done. We get that. But God's kingdom involves more than that just, kind, that, just that kind of will. It also, it, it also involves his revealed will. He gives commands, right? He tells people to do certain things. He tells certain people to do certain things. Like he has a will that he has revealed to fathers, right? And so just because I don't know what's going to happen to me tomorrow, I don't know that secret will, I do know what God wants me to do tomorrow, right? He wants me to work hard. He wants me to love my wife. He wants me to love my children. He wants me to teach my children. He wants me to provide uh, food for and shelter and safety for my family. He wants me to uh, love uh, my neighbor. He wants me to, to you know, consider the poor and, and give charity to the poor. He wants me to go to church on Sunday. He wants me to be available to, to, to help people. If somebody asks me to go one mile, he wants me to go two miles. Like, like he's already revealed a lot of what he wants for me as, as a father. He's revealed things to my wife as well. And it's different by the way. There's different revelations depending on who you are. If you're a wife, he's got some certain revealed will for you. And when you're praying that Lord's Prayer, that's going to that, that's gonna mean something very different to you as a wife than to me as a father or to you as a child, right? As a child or a pastor. There's certain things that are revealed in his will for pastors. And then, of course, there are certain things that are revealed in his will for the civil governing authority. The government. So what a judge is supposed to do, what a, what a king is supposed to do, right? That there's, there's a revealed will. And so when you're praying, God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that part of his will, that revealed will for the government is certainly part of that. So when you're saying that prayer, you're saying, God, I want your will to be done on earth for fathers, for mothers, for children, for pastors, and of course, for rulers, This is not controversial. This is not something that's debatable. Romans 13, uh, this is New Testament as well. It says this, Let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but from God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So the, so the civil governing authorities, the ones that are there, you're to be subject to them because there's o- the only power that really is legitimate, the only power that really exists is the kind that God has ordained. And God has ordained the civil governing authority, the higher powers. Here's what it says next. It says, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou not then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have the praise of the same. For he is, listen, this is talking about the civil, the government, right? The government, how people rule, how people reign, how they judge, ready? The government, he, 
is a minister of God for thy good. But if thou do which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For, again, he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. The civil governing authority, according to Scripture, according to God's will, that when we pray the Lord's Prayer the way that Christ taught us how to pray, he said, this is how you pray when you pray, you pray like this. That will, the, 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 the will of God that he reveals to the government, it's because He's a minister of God, he's a servant of God, he's a revenger of God, executing the wrath of God upon the evildoer. It's all of God. It's all of God. The, the authority comes from God, he's a minister of God, he, he, he does the work for God, and he's executing what? Revenge? Wrath? Of who? Of God. It's all from God. And so, so the civil governing authority ought to be, we ought to be desiring, we ought to, when we pray that prayer, your will be done. We're not saying we want a government that's, that's of Allah, right? We don't, we're not, that's not what we want. We don't want a government of Allah. We don't want a government of Satan, right? We, that, that's not what we're praying for. Obvi I know this seems dumb, guys. I get it. This seems remedial. I understand, right? But, it, but it's true. When we're praying, God, your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we are not praying for uh, our government to, to, to do Allah's rules or Satan's rules or, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. But you know what I'm trying to say, like we're, or, 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 or any of that. We're, we're asking for the government to do God's will, Christ's will, because Christ is God. Christ is the King of Kings. Christ is the Lord of Lords. And so our government, when we pray that prayer, when, and, and I hope we mean it when we pray that prayer, right? Because I know sometimes we, we just kind of go through the motions, right? We, we know this prayer so well that we just, we just repeat it like we're a robot, and it's just like, yeah, I get it, you know, on earth is in heaven. But, but, but if we actually mean it in our, in our hearts, right? Because that's what the point is, right? Christ is not just saying, look, these are the magic words. Say the magic words, you'll be fine. No, he's saying this is, this is what you, your desire should be. You should be, you should be asking for this. You should be, you should be coming to God, Christ with this request, these requests. Give us our daily bread, you know, that, that kind of thing. That's what he's saying. We should, we should feel this. We should be asking for God's will to be done in our lives in every area. And government is a key area of that. Romans 13 makes that very, very clear. And, and, and we know this lesson, too. You know, we, we've, we have the history of Israel. We have the history of Israel. And, and, you know, in the times where there was no king in Israel, right, there, there was no king that was executing justice according to God's law. There was no king that was, that was, that was taking the law and saying, look, we need, to, we need to bring God's will into this, God's kingdom. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There was no king in Israel. And what was going on in Israel at the time when there was no king in Israel? Everyone did whatever the heck they wanted to do. Everyone did whatever they wanted to do. They were eating each other, literally. They were, they, were, they, were, they were raping people, gang rapes. They were chopping people up into bits. I mean, it was, just, it was just chaos. They were worshiping any god they wanted to. There was no king in Israel, right? There was no one to, to say, you know, let's, let's execute justice according to God's will. God, your will be done. I, I, I'm your king, but I'm an under king. You're the king of kings. You're my king. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There was no one like that in Israel, so everyone did whatever they want, and you ended up with stuff like this. That's what you ended up with. In, in, instead of the beautiful art of the temple, the tabernacle, all this stuff, and you ended up with statues of penises. That everyone looked, everyone came, gathered around to see the biggest penis in town. That's, that's basically what you ended up with. And so that's our situation. There's no king in the United States. There's no, there's no king in the United States. Everyone's doing whatever the heck they want to do. There's no one in the United States that's, that, that, that's in, our, in authority saying, you know what, we're a minister of God. We're a minister of God. We are not the ultimate king. Christ is the king. Christ is the Lord. He's the king of the kings. He's the Lord of the Lord. So he's certainly the king of the president. He's certainly the Lord of, of, the, of the Congress. There's no one like that here. And, and, and the reason why there's no one like that here is because we've had decades and decades and decades of, let me just, let me just come out and say, polytheistic teaching coming from Christian, conservative Christian pulpits when it comes to politics. Here's a quotation from Tim Keller. 
quote, I'd rather be in a democracy than a state in which the government is officially Christian. That's the quote. Tim, the great Tim Keller, the wise. Tim Keller, the wise, the gray, the sage. I'd rather be in a democracy than a state in which the government is officially Christian. This comes from a Wall Street Journal article. Uh, guys, this is what I why, what I mean. Like, these guys are akin to the, the selling your soul for a bowl of porridge. Like, this is this is what you do. You sell your soul, and then you get a think piece in the Wall Street Journal, and you get a little bit more notoriety. You get a little bit more publicity, and it's not a lot because in comparison to you know the really famous people, you're really not all that famous. But in your circles, in evangelical circles, you're pretty famous, right? You sold your soul, and what you get in return is every now and then they reach out to you for an interview. They reach out to you for an interview, or you get a think piece every now and then. Not very often, but every now and then. Here's the context, because this is behind a paywall, and I'm not going to pay for that. Are you, are you out of your mind? I'm not paying for that. Here's the context. The September 11th attacks led more people to Redeemer. This is Tim Keller's church. I went to Redeemer, so I know. I know about Redeemer. In 2008, Dr. Keller's best-selling book, the Re- this is, by the way, this is around the time I did go to Redeemer, right? Because I converted around this time. If you remember my story, uh, I was living in New York r- during the great financial crisis, and I was living the fast life, drugs, all the whole nine yards, partying, all that. And then my income took like a 50% hit. I was making a ton of money at the time. My income took a 50% hit, but I still lived the lifestyle. I went into debt just to continue my lifestyle, you know. And it was right around this time. And and that's when I went to Tim Keller's church, when he started gaining popularity. I didn't know that. I thought he was always popular. I didn't know. The September 11th attacks led to more people to Redeemer. In 2008, Dr. Keller's best-selling book, The Reason for God, made him a celebrity. Do you, do, you see, do you hear it? I mean, they're open about it. He's a celebrity now. Drawing visitors who hope to sign for a signed book or a selfie. He founded the nonprofit Redeemer City to City to help other urban church planters learn from his success. This is how I found my wife, by the way. I went to a Redeemer City to City church plant, and it was a much smaller church, and I was very glad I did it after I went to Tim Keller's church. This is true. And, and, and Tim Keller, you know, because of his celebrity status— he would never announce which campus he was going to be at, so it was always a surprise. So the, the idea was that you never know where he's going to be, so you couldn't come just because Tim Keller was going to be there. Because that's that's the kind of following he had. You know, if, if, if he announced I was going to be at the East Side campus, then the other campuses would be empty, and everyone would come to see Tim Keller, the sage, the wise, the gray, speak. Dr. Keller preaches a conservative Christianity. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. Dr. Keller preaches a conservative Christianity to his cosmopolitan flock in which marriage is between a man and a woman and abortion is murder. Right. Although he was glad when Roe versus Wade was overturned in June, he also says he shuddered for the country because we're so divided. He worries about efforts to impose Christian values that may not hold up if put to a vote. Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's how we're supposed to pray. But Tim is shuddering in fear and worried about Christian values because people might not like it. Lord, your will be done just so long as everybody likes it and everybody agrees. Your, 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 your kingdom come just as long as, you know, there's no one that's going to feel left out. Remember, we got we to gotta consider diversity, equity, and inclusion as well. Because if people are going to feel left out, then your king, it's not time for your kingdom yet. No, your kingdom, don't come. Don't come. Because, there, you know, Muslims might not like it or Jews might not like it. Quote, he worries about efforts to impose Christian values that may not hold up if put to a vote. I'd rather be in a democracy in the state in which the government is officially Christian, he says. Instead of trying to take power, I think what Christians ought to be doing is trying to renew their churches. Well, we can walk and chew gum at the same time, because Christ's kingdom is not limited to the churches. Christ's kingdom is not limited to the churches. He is the king of kings, not just the king of pastors. Jesus Christ is the king of kings, not just the king of pastors. He's the Lord of lords, not just the Lord of the deacons. But even if he was just Lord of the deacons, the civil governing authority 
according to scripture, which is our standard, not Tim Keller's wise wisdom sage words of advice on his Twitter feed, the civil governing authority is a deacon of God. And so Christians in government should rule as Christians, regardless of what atheists think, regardless of what Muslims think, regardless of what the Jews think, regardless of what anyone thinks. It doesn't matter because they serve Christ. They don't serve the people. They serve Christ. They don't serve the people. Here's the reality. Democracy is an idol. Democracy is an idol. Uh, Tim Keller is a political polytheist. He's a polytheist because what he thinks is the right thing to impose changes depending on the makeup of the people. You see, if there's a lot of Muslims, that's going to be a different government. And that's what he, he, he prefers this. He says he'd rather be in this. This is not me imposing this belief on him. This is his preference. His preference is political polytheism because according to what the people, the makeup of the people are, that's what he thinks is the right thing for the government to do. That is idolatry. It's, idol it's textbook idolatry. Because regardless of the makeup of the people, there is one lawgiver, and it's not the people. There is one lawgiver, and it's Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Any way you slice the text, any way you slice the biblical commands, that is what you end up with. It is God's rule. It is God's kingdom. It is God's will that we ought to be preferring. We'd rather have God's will than the will of the nations, than the will of the people. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we're not just reciting magic words. We're, we're supposed to really feel it. We're supposed to really want it. His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're not supposed to rather, we're not supposed to prefer political polytheism, democracy, where it's like, well, you know, whatever's right in the eyes of the people. This is the thing. I don't think that um, in the book of Judges that it's talking about a democracy necessarily, but that's the closest thing that I could find to a democracy in Israel. It's when there was no king in Israel, no king, no servant of God that was saying, no, God's rules are this, God's law is this. No, everyone did whatever was right in their own eyes. Tim Keller seems to me to be preferring, to, ra to be rathering the days of the judges. The days when there is pornography in the public parks where everyone comes around to check it out and to take pictures and to pretend like this is some kind of meaningful, beautiful art when all it is is ugly, disgusting, offensive, pornographic, idolatry. Idolatry. I got to stop talking about Tim Keller. This is the last one for a while. I hope you understand what I'm trying to put down here. God bless you. Have a great week. Pray for my week. I, I do really want to get the year started right. Because uh, the last Q4 last year did not go well for me. I'm fine, but it didn't go that well for me. So in any case, I hope you found this video helpful. God bless. Mm -hmm.